Do you know how to use aperture, shutter speed and ISO to get the image you want? Well, stay tuned to find out. Hi, Demelza Marie here with Creative Online Courses and on this channel I guide you through tips and tutorials to crush it with visual media and produce your online courses like a boss. I also go behind the scenes with a vlog of what it's like to be a mum entrepreneur, so if you're new here, please consider subscribing. So in the previous three videos in this mini series, we've looked at aperture, shutter speed, and ISO separately. And in this video, we're going to look at all three together and how to get the image that you want in different scenarios. Now I will be talking about video, um, the video formula, if you like, at the end of this video. But first of all, let's look at photography. So the first scenario is a low light situation. So this might be shooting in the evening or at night time or in a dark room or something like that. And obviously if it's a low light situation, you need as much light as you can to come through that lens in order to get an image. So the first thing that you might want to do is open up your aperture. Now obviously if you open up your aperture, then you are going to also have shallow depth of field. If you need a reminder of how that works, you can check out this link right here. And if you, um, open up the shutter you might be able, um, the aperture sorry you might be able to use a regular shutter speed um, and that will be fine if it's still too dark you can slow down the shutter speed but just bear in mind that the slower the shutter speed the more camera movement that you're going to get so if you're hand holding it that's not a good thing make sure you're using a tripod also if you have a moving image in front like me right now um the person or whatever would have to stand very still in order for there not to be movement on the image if the shutter speed is low. If you find that the shutter speed needs to be um, a certain level so that it's not picking up motion um, and the aperture, you know, that combination isn't working out for you, then you can increase the ISO to increase the brightness. Now, I wouldn't increase it too high, so I wouldn't go above 800 because the higher you go, the more grain and noise comes into the image and obviously you don't want a um, bad quality image. So I would encourage you to increase um, the light sources, so bring in studio lights or something like that rather than increase the ISO too much. So that would be for shallow depth of field. If you are looking for, um, like for everything to be in focus, like a greater depth of field situation, then you're gonna to have to close down the aperture. So instead of having a nice wide aperture, it will be closed. Um, obviously that means less light is coming through the aperture, which means that you would definitely have to slow down your shutter speed in order to allow more light in that way. So definitely use a tripod in that scenario. And you may need, again, to increase your ISO. So those would be some of the things that you might want to think about if you're shooting in a low light situation. Okay, the next scenario is a normal light situation. So if you're shooting in the daylight and that kind of thing and it's not, maybe it's cloudy or something like that, but just regular normal light, then you are gonna have two different scenarios, whether you want to prioritize your aperture or whether you want to prioritize your shutter. So first of all, let's look at the aperture. So if you want a shallow depth of field in your background, so you want it blurry back here, and then you're going to prioritize your aperture and you're going to want to have a wide aperture as much as um, you can, whatever your lens will allow you to do. And then um, if you've got a wide aperture in, in normal um, daylight settings, then you're going to want a faster shutter speed so that you're not overexposing it because if you have a sh slower shutter speed, it's gonna allow too much light in. Now in this situation, you should be able to use the base ISO number, so whether it's 100 or 200 on your camera, and that should give you a really nice quality image. If you're looking for greater depth of field, so that's again where this background is in focus and not blurry, then you're going to shut down that aperture to a more narrow aperture, and then you can slow down the shutter speed or use a regular um, shutter speed in order to balance that out because obviously if you're letting less light in through the aperture, you want to allow a little bit more light in through the shutter speed. Again, the ISO should be able to be kept on at the base level. So if you wanted to prioritize your shutter speed it, um, for motion purposes, either to um, give that idea of motion, some like kind of blurry movement across the screen kind of thing, then you're going to want to slow down your shutter speed in order to create that motion look. And uh, if you do that, if you're slowing down, you're letting more light in. So you're going to want to have a small aperture 
in order to compensate for that so that again you're not overexposing. Now if you're wanting to freeze the image so that everything is very um, in focus and sharp and kind of frozen like that frozen droplet in mid, mid air kind of thing then you're going to want to have a very very fast shutter speed and if you're doing a very fast shutter speed you're going to need to open up your aperture in order to allow more light into the lens. You may also find that you need to adjust the ISO in order to increase the brightness if you um, need to have a narrower lens, narrower aperture. So you just basically prioritize, when you look at your settings, you prioritize based on what you're looking for. Are you looking for motion? Are you looking for freezing motion in time? Are you looking for the blurry background look? Are you looking for everything to be in focus? Think about what your priority is and then adjust, make that adjustment first and then adjust everything else based on whatever that priority is. And the third scenario is a bright light. So if you are shooting in bright daylight, like it's midday and it's just sun shining and it's really harsh, bright sunlight, then you are obviously going to want to limit the amount of light that's coming through that lens. So if you want a shallow depth of field, for example, where you have a wide aperture, then that's obviously going to allow a lot of light coming through. So you're going to have to have a very fast shutter speed in order to compensate so that you're not overexposing. You may also find that you need a neutral density filter which you can put on your camera lens. It basically acts as sunglasses for your camera. So that's another option you can do in order to minimize the amount of brightness. If you are obviously wanting to use a greater depth of field, then you can close down the aperture which will help with the amount of light that's coming through and depending on how much light is still coming through you can adjust the shutter speed accordingly and obviously the ISO as well you adjust as needed but if it's bright sunlight then you probably not want to increase the brightness so the ISO is most likely going to be staying at the base level which gives you the best quality image. Okay, so that's the photography. Now let's look at the video formula. So basically you want to think about what frame rate you're going to use to start with because that's going to be the base thing that everything else is based on. So very often you look at 24, 25 or 30 or it's basically 29, 97, um, 60 and you might have other frame rates as um, yeah, frame rates as well. So choose which frame rate you want to use. Um, the 24 gives more of a film look 30 is typical video look, 60 is great if you're looking to do slow motion or something like that. Just bear in mind that there's double the amount of frames in a second. So that's gonna double, you know, the storage is gonna be that much higher. So you don't need to use 60 unless you're planning to use slow motion for those um, video clips. So let's pick 30 for example. And then once we've chosen our frame rates per second, we want to choose our shutter speed. So we want to double what the frame rate is. So if we've chosen 30 for the frame rate, we want to use 60 for the shutter speed. Once we've got that set, we can then look at our aperture. So do we want to have a blurry background or do we want things to be in focus? So choose whichever aperture is appropriate for the look that you're going for. And then once you've chosen that, you need to think, okay, is this too bright? So look at your exposure meter on your camera and you'll have like um, a dark bit in the middle and then little dots or something um, either side. And it will tell you whether you are underexposed or overexposed or correct. So if you are underexposed and you need more light, then you could increase your ISO if you need to. Um, I wouldn't encourage you to do so more than 800 because again, it decreases the quality of the image. So if you do need to increase the brightness still, I would encourage you to get extra lighting like studio lighting rather than increasing your ISO. And then basically make those adjustments as needed in order to get the correct exposure. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. I do realize that there's a lot of information to pack into a video and there's a lot of questions possibly. Um, do check out the other videos in this series to see if um, I can answer your questions in those videos. But um, also let me know in the comments section below. I would be interested to know whether you like the flexibility of, being, um, of using a manual settings and doing it yourself, or if you prefer to use automatic and let the camera decide for you. So let me know in the comments section below. So thanks for watching and if you're interested in more tips and tutorials on visual media or producing online courses or what it's like behind the scenes of a mum building a business, then be sure to subscribe right here and you can watch a couple more videos around here. And if you like this video, please hit that like button and we'll talk soon.